welcome to my channel and thank you to my subscribers if you have not already subscribed to this channel kindly subscribe in this video we are going to see how to set up a single sign on integration between aws cognito and google identity provider when i say google identity provider it's basically the gmail so i'm going to use the aws cognito service for creating a user pool and then I'm going to use this Google developer console which I have already logged in so if you go and search Google API console you will get a link called Google developer console I have already logged into this developer console using my Gmail ID and you can use your own personal Gmail ID to log into this console and I'm going to use Firefox for testing this integration so this involves multiple steps like creating a user pool in Cognito and then configuring that uh, Cognito user pool client in the Google Developer Console and then testing the integration between Cognito and Google that is Gmail. So the first step is to create a basic user pool. So I'm just going to create a user pool with very minimal settings because the main goal is to test the integration between Cognito and Gmail. So I'm not going to concentrate too much on uh, the advanced settings that are available in Cognito. You can always explore those options later. So if you click the create user pool, you will get uh, certain options. I will quickly go through these options and uh, you can follow me and create your own pool. So I'm just going to use username to log in and then click next you can leave it to defaults i'm going to disable mfa i don't need this for this particular video and i'm going to disable these options i'm going to disable the self-registration and even this one and here actually let's uh, select email family name given name and name as required and as of now select this option and go to the next page and you can give a pool name so I am just going to name it Cognito Google and I am going to use the hosted UI so I am going to check that option and I'm not going to use a custom domain. You can explore that option later. As of now, just go ahead and use a Cognito domain. So let me just type some random string and see let, if it is available. Yeah, it's available. And then we need to create a public client while creating this pool. So let me create a client called Google Client generate a client secret and as of now i will just add jwt.io as a callback url so here you can leave these things as it is you don't have to add anything specific so here let's actually remove code grant and add implicit grant for now and as of now, this client uses the Cognito user pool as the identity provider, but we will actually modify it at a later point of time. So it has open ID, phone and email. Let's remove phone and add profile. So now click next. You can see all the values that you entered in the previous screens and click create user pool. So the user pool got created now and you can see all these settings that you configured while creating the user pool and if you want to modify any specific configuration you can go ahead and do that but it is not really required just for configuring this integration so the next step is uh, we have to configure the google developer console so the very first step we need to do is uh, we have to create a new 
project. So let me actually name that project as Cognito Google Integration. You can leave this to no organization for now and just click create. So it will take few seconds to provision the project. So now the project is provisioned and it's already selected. In case it's not selected, you can always go here, select that particular project or if you have multiple projects, you need to select that specific project where you want to do this configuration. So as of now, the project is selected. The next step is creating a client for Cognito. So when you actually go to this credential screen, you will see this warning saying you need to configure the consent screen. So let's go ahead and configure the consent screen. As far as I know, you can't use external uh, because it needs to be, a, I think it needs to be a verified app. So as of now, just select uh, Okay, uh, actually it's the other way around. You can select external, but I don't think you can select internal because I didn't specify any specific organization. So let's create it and let's name it as Cognito app and the support email, I will give the same email address. Yeah, I will use that same email address. I'm not adding any logo, but you can explore that option later. And developer email address, I'm going to give same thing. So the consent screen is now configured. You can go ahead and explore all these other options, but it's not really required. So you can go back to the back page and go to credentials. So in credentials, uh, you can actually see multiple options here, like API key, show or client ID, service account, all these options. What we have to do is we are actually setting up Cognito as a OAuth client for Google. So that users with Gmail accounts can log in to that Cognito app. So I'm going to select this OAuth client ID option and the application type is web application so i'm going to again name it as cognito web app and we need to add these redirect uris uh, let's get back to that later as of now let's create this application so the application got the client app got created in google so we have the client id and secret here so what we will do now is go back to cognito and go to the sign in experience and add identity provider and select google so cognito has already done lots of work like a background work in establishing that connectivity between google and cognito that is a uh, pulling all the endpoints that are required to redirect to google so once you select google the only Thing you need to configure is like client id secrets scopes and map the attributes so let's go back to this google developer console copy this client id enter it here then copy this client secret enter it here and scopes let's add open id profile and email so here you can see the four mandatory attributes that i selected while creating the user pool and since all these four attributes are mandatory, by you need to map it to some attribute from Google. So if you go here, you will get a drop down with the list of attributes that are sent from Google to Cognito through the ID token, the JWT ID token. So you can map these values. It's available somewhere in the Google API documentation. You can check it but it is pretty straightforward. You can easily see what it maps to. So name maps to name given name maps to given name family name to family name and email so it's pretty straightforward like you can see all these attributes both cognito and google uses the same naming convention so you don't have to worry too much you can easily map one to one between google and cognito so 
So let's add this identity provider. So Google identity provider is added. The Cognito client is created here. But if you remember, I actually didn't do one of these steps that is adding the authorized redirect URIs. So if you go to Cognito documentation, Cognito Google identity provider. So here somewhere you should see. Yeah. So for the redirect URIs, this is the redirect URI that you need to add. So though this domain prefix needs to be replaced. That is something yeah, we can do it now. So if I go here and then if you go back to this Cognito console, somewhere you should see the domain. Yeah, it's here. So it's Cog Google. Let me actually replace this domain prefix. And this region needs to be replaced. It is US West one in my case. So you can use whatever region you want, US East one or APAC or EU, whichever region you use. Just make sure you replace this domain prefix and the region with the correct values. Otherwise, when you try to log in through Google, Google will throw an error saying the redirect URI is not valid. So let's save this option. So now the Cognito client is configured in Google and the Google identity provider is configured in Cognito. So basically what we have done now is establish the connectivity, basically the what we call it as federation. So configuration is established between Google and Cognito. So now we need a client application in Cognito to log in using the Google credentials. And if you remember when we created the user pool, we actually created a test client called Google client. So let's open that client. So if you look at this client, it currently supports Cognito user pool directory. I, what I will do is I will keep that Cognito user pool as is and I will select the Google identity provider as well. And click save changes. So now we need to test this integration. So let's actually do that testing. So if you look at this uh, client configuration, Google client, or any other client that you create in Cognito, you will see this option called view hosted UI, which actually opens in a new tab. And then it will show the Cognito login page, all those things. So I'm going to copy the link Firefox because I don't want to really test it in Chrome because I already have an established Google session with my Gmail ID, you will not see like what is actually happening because the moment Cognito redirects to Google, Google will automatically generate the token. You won't even see the Google, the Gmail login page. That's why I'm using a different browser altogether. So now if you see, you're seeing two options. This is the Cognito hosted UI. So if you remember, when we go back to the hosted UI, we selected two identity providers for this client. One is the Cognito user pool directory, which basically means the users that are created directly in Cognito user pool, and then the Google identity provider. So here you can see a button to log in using Google and the username password to log in using your Cognito user credentials. But in this video, we are more interested on how the Google integration works. So I'm going to directly click, click this continue with Google. So I'm going to use this ID to login. So now you can see I was able to successfully log in using Google and Cognito generated the ID tokens. It automatically mapped all those values like given name, name, family name, email, all these values are mapped automatically to the Cognito user that was created after that Google login. And if you go back to the Cognito console and select this 
users tab you will see that google user created like basically the user right second action 101 at gmail.com so that user got created automatically when i logged in for the very first time and it says external provider and if you look at the user id it starts with google underscore that is because if you go back to this identity provider the identity provider id is google so that's why you see that uh, google underscore a random number which is a randomly generated kind of a number prefixed with that identity provider id so let's actually do slight enhancement here so if you look at this email it says not verified that is because uh, if you look at this uh, configuration here I'm just mapping these attributes from Google's ID token to Cognito users attributes and uh, there is no step to or, like verify the email so let's actually do one more thing so Google ID token has a specific attribute for email verified let's map it to that one so here there is an email verified attribute let's click save changes and let's again try to log in here so what i will do is i will delete all the cookies so that it doesn't reuse my google session so let's see how everything changes here so if you go back to this user so right now this user it says not verified let's just go back here log in with that same user and see what happens let me refresh the screen great so now you see the email verified status as verified here and if you see this ID token generated from Cognito, you will see email verified as true. So this is these are all some enhancements that you can experiment uh, after you set up the integration. There are lots of other things that you can do, like uh, you can explore because uh, the, the Google ID token returns lots of attributes. So it's up to you, like whatever up, whatever attributes you need for your application, you can keep. Um, experimenting with different attributes and see how it works now actually let's use a different ID to log in and see what happens it should ideally work Yeah, it actually worked. So if I go back to this users, I should see another user. Yeah, so another user got created. The email is already verified because G if you remember, like if you try to create an account in Google, it actually does certain steps like where you can add your phone number to verify your e uh, phone number. So Google itself performs certain additional steps for verifying your ID so you don't have to worry too much about verifying the email address again in cognito you can just trust the verification that is done by google and use the email verified status from the google's id token and map it to cognito user so this is the end-to-end -end setup for just adding a google identity provider to your cognito user pool and as i said you can experiment with uh, different options once you have done the basic setup and if you have any questions i'm sure like uh, you might face some issues here and there but if you if you face any issues or if you have any questions please feel free to comment in this video and i am i will be happy to respond back to you i hope you enjoyed the video again please subscribe to my channel thank you